this is MJ and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really big bulky blanket. We're using Sugarbush Chill. This is a super bulky six yarn and I'm using extra fine merino. So this is, you can actually tell just by looking at this how soft and gorgeous this yarn is. So this is what we're going to be using. You're going to need a 25 millimeter crochet hook. I purchased this hook from Michaels, but you can check online. There's lots of choices. And also you're gonna need a yarn needle for bulky yarn. So as you can see, this one's got a really big end on it. So I already have a ball rolled off that I'm gonna begin with. So we're gonna start out by chaining 68. So you're going to want to make a slip knot, put that on the hook and just tighten it up. So you're going to want these stitches to be big and loose. One, two, three, so you may need to practice a bit just to try to get a feel for this big hook and getting your stitches nice and even. You just wanna go slow so you can get a good start to this blanket. Okay, so I'm gonna finish chaining off camera. You're gonna wanna be chaining 68. Okay, so once you've completed your 68 chains, we're gonna begin half double crocheting. Now we're not gonna work into the front of the chain here. We're gonna wanna work into the back bumps of the chain. Okay, so we're gonna start out going into the third from the hook, so one, two, three. Turn your chain and then this bump right here, yarn over and go through. Pull up a loop. So now you have three on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, so you can see these bumps from the side. That's what you're gonna wanna go into. So yarn over, go through, pull up a loop yarn over, pull through all three. So going through that back bump is gonna give us a nice chained edge here. So if you're not sure if you're going through the right spot, can always turn and look at that chain. So if you've grabbed this stitch, you're gonna notice it's gonna be off. So just yarn over and go through. So that's what you're gonna do all the way along your chain. The foundation row takes the most time just because you wanna go slow, you wanna make sure that you're working into these bumps. They're really easy to see if you turn your chain on the side. So just take your time working through that very first row. Okay, so I've reached the end. And then you're gonna wanna chain two and turn. I'm not including my chain as a stitch in this pattern. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into the third loop of the half double crochet. So I'm just gonna show you, this is your front loop, this is your back loop, and then you'll notice that there's a loop underneath the stitches of the half double. So we are gonna work into that loop under that stitch. So I've yarned over already. Okay, so then I'm just Getting that, my hook under that loop, pulling up a loop, yarn over, 
pull through all three. And once you get going, it gets easier. So there's the next one there, yarn over. So you can kind of turn your work at this point. Turn it and then you can see and then you can get in at it a little bit easier. Pull up that loop. And now what it's doing is it's pushing those stitches forward. So it gives a really nice kind of knit stitch look. Yarn over. And then the next one, yarn over, pull through all three. So I know it might feel that this hook is really, really big for this project and this yarn, but these nice, loose, big stitches are just amazing and so squishy and soft that you're gonna love the finished look. It's gonna give you the look of those really nice, big, thick stitches, but we're not gonna use as much yarn. So this blanket's gonna be a little bit more cost effective although it is still going to be expensive if you want to use merino. You can use an alternative, but if you really want that look of merino, big, bulky, chunky merino blanket, then chill is a great, is a great option. all three. So we're just going to keep doing this. So I'm just going to finish working along my row and you should have 66 stitches when you're finished and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I'm just getting to the last stitch. If you count, you know you'll be sure that you're getting the right one. There's that last loop that you want to get your hook under. And then we'll just chain two and turn again. And this is how we're gonna make the entire blanket. So here is our next row. So there's the third loop. And we're gonna work into that third loop again. So basically, you're just gonna keep repeating this until you get the size blanket that you desire. I'm gonna give you all the details for how to make this big throw that's gonna go on my king size bed. So the width of this blanket will be approximately the width of a king bed, but this yarn does stretch out so much so it will hang over the sides a little bit and that's with the stitch going this way. So I've worked 42 rows and I'm just finishing off. Okay, so once you're finished with your desired length, so my blanket, 42 rows will give you about a 42 inch blanket and also our each of our stitches are about an inch so my blanket is about 66 inches wide so 66 by 42 and i've used 16 balls of sugar bush chill so what i'll do for you is you can find on my blog i will work out some other dimensions and how many balls of yarn you'll need. This blanket, it, it does stretch quite a bit. So if I lay it across the bottom of my king size bed, it meets just about each side of the bed. So if you want the blanket to hang down a little on each side of a king, I would suggest increasing the width of the blanket
but this would make a good size for a queen if you want it to hang over the edges. So you just want to weave that end in, just hide it through the stitches. Pick a good spot where you can kind of weave so that you're not going to notice it. And then once you've weaved it one way, just go back in the opposite direction. Now this merino, it can be washed. We already had a little bit of an accident when I was in the process of making the blanket. It got a little bit of tea spilt on it. And I soaked, I just hand washed the blanket. I soaked it. Um, a little bit of mild detergent and it the the marks came right out and then I just laid it out to dry so it will stretch a little bit the section that I had washed did stretch out a little bit but once it dries really well it does tend to regain its shape and I was really actually happy with the way it looked because I was worried about washing it. So you can just trim your end. So if you can see here, these are the stitches that the part of the blanket that was washed and then this would be the section. So they just bunch in a little closer together than these stitches, but it's really not noticeable because I only had to wash a little section if you washed your whole blanket. So if you hand wash your blanket and you want to stretch it out a little bit more, it will definitely get a little bit bigger if you don't want to use as much yarn. But I'm really happy with the size of this blanket for using 16 balls of chill. It really came out well. It's really nice and thick and heavy. Here's my starting. And I'll get some pictures for you of how this looks laid out. So you could have it for a throw in your family room, but I really do love this blanket for a bedroom. And I even actually have laid it out on my daughter's twin bed and the size even looks amazing on a twin bed if you want a really big, long, oversized throw for a child's room. It looks great. So I hope you enjoyed this quick, easy uh, blanket tutorial. It's super easy to make, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Make an excellent gift. I sell Sugarbush Chill on my website and I have some colors that are at an amazing price if you want to try a 100% merino wool that's really great quality go check out my website and check out this yarn mm -hmm.